Complete training is available at itdvds.com. Choosing the architecture for your Windows Server Update services most of the time is going to have to do with how many clients you have to support. But it can also have to do with the geographic location of your clients. Are they all in one particular network, in one office? Or are they in multiple local area networks in multiple geographic locations connected by WAN links and most likely a VPN? Or are they completely separate from each other? All of these factors will affect your architecture. The most simple architecture is going to be the standalone Windows Server Update services with the standalone database on it. So basically we have Microsoft Update here and inside our firewall is going to be our local area network. Here's our Windows Server Update services server and our clients simply connect to it. So this is very simple, just one server, it has everything on it. The next, ar next architecture we're going to look at has to do with having multiple Windows Server Update services servers. And they're in what's called an upstream and a downstream configuration. Basically you have your Windows Server Update service, service connecting to Microsoft Update, one of them, and then you have a downstream WSUS server that connects to your upstream WSUS server to get its information, so to get the updates. This can actually save on internet bandwidth because you don't have multiple WSUS servers going out through the internet to get your updates. You've only got one going out and then your other WSUS servers pull their updates and information from this WSUS server. And then your clients can connect to each WSUS server to get their updates. Now this could be a situation where let's say this WSUS server is in a separate office and this connection here is through a VPN or they could be on the same local area network. But let's say they were on different local area networks. So this WSUS server was on a completely different local area network and they were connected by a VPN. Well you wouldn't want your clients going over the VPN to pull all their updates because that would take a lot of time and a lot of internet bandwidth. So that's why you have your other WSUS server over here and it just pulls it once, pulls the updates once from your primary WSS server, your upstream WSS server. If they were on the same local area network, you may have to just to handle the load. You may have a lot of clients you have to deal with, or maybe your server isn't as powerful, so you need two of them to handle the load. The next architecture is a network load balance pair of front end servers and then you have your SQL Server on the back end. So we're not going to use the internal database server that can come with our Windows Server Update services. And most of the time if you get to this level, this SQL Server is going to be clustered. And what your clients do when they talk to your Windows Server Update service, services to get updates, they actually talk to a virtual IP in the network load balancing of Windows takes that request and sends it to a particular server. So this can be many servers. It can be three, four, five servers that are all handling requests, but the back end, all the, the SQL server data is in one place. So they all talk to the same database. So that's where we get a front end, back end configuration. So these are going to be our main architectures. We're also going to talk about centralized management versus distributed management a little bit later on.